So we're all finished on this job and I must say I'm very pleased with how it's turned out. It's the second of two large and very non-standard projects that we've done in the space of two weeks, both of which had a certain element of risk attached to them using new hardware or new methods. And both in the end have turned out very well. So the main, the main challenge on this one was the extra heavy duty runners, which we hadn't, we hadn't used, certainly not in this arrangement, or, and not this specific runner, hadn't used them before. So there's always that element of doubt about how they're going to work, uh, but they're working very well. I would say they're nice and smooth, as, sm as smooth as you'd hope really for something that is of such high weight bearing capacity. They come out to full extension. Of course, we'll have to wait and see how they are with the books on, but the, the load capacity of them is more than enough at 160, pound, uh, 160 kilos per pair, and we've actually used three on, on each pullout, so I expect that'll be plenty. They were fitted into a carcass underneath this, this bulkhead, which is part of the stairway that comes up. I'll show you out in the hall. This is, this is a, a barn conversion which was done in the 80s, uh, very nice old building. So the stair was put in coming up that way and this was a very unusable space which was always lending itself to banging your head on it if you did try to get into there. Uh, I'll, I'll see if I can drop in a before photo of the room um, at some point and you can see how it's transformed the space. So the customer came to me looking for ideas, looking for some, some way to, to use that space because they've got lots of books and CDs they want to store, um, but also to improve the, the, the look and feel of the room, which is their main living room. As you might guess, there will be a TV on this space and I think a hi-fi. We do have lighting in the upper shelf here which I can't show you because the electrics are still in progress. So the electrician has been in before us and will come back afterwards just to, to fit a, uh, a, a surface mounted um, socket box, which the lighting will plug into. But we have tested it with an extension, so I can show you a photo of that later, of that working. Now the way that's turned on is a little push switch here. It's discreetly hidden. And that, that goes through a 12 millimeter drilled hole in that side with a, a um, groove in between the thickness of the, these two panels that then goes drops down to there. Um, the, the light itself is like, this, like the project I showed you not so long ago with the guitars in it. It's a, it's a similar arrangement, the same sort of lighting strip. So this was the, the biggest job we did in the house. We did also do another one over the space of two days. So yesterday morning we started off with this simple bookcase. <clears throat> Essentially simple but not the easiest to fit because we had some very tricky scribes there with the old beams of this barn conversion. Now people that have been following my YouTube will know that I've been trying different options for corking the gaps, knowing that some options lead to cracking. They look fine for a few days, but crack later. So what we did on this one was use the CT1 product, a quite expensive um, adhesive filler that's paintable. And I'm really pleased with the results on this. Um, you really feel that it's it's stuck well. Uh, and we've got a very good, very good joint there, if we can just show that. So you can see that there's a funny shape to this wall, which we have to scribe around. Even more challenging was the top, and the approach that I took to this was I, I um, scribed tight and filled with CT1 to the painted wall, but just left an unfilled gap to the dark beams, which I think is the best approach because it's better to have a tidy dark gap against the dark material rather than a fill. And without wanting to disrespect anybody else's work, just as an example of something else fitted, See, that's, that's what you would get trying too hard to, to fill. You, you get the white filler going into the grain of the rough material and that really doesn't look any better. A couple more talky bits before I show you a montage of the making of this um, and a, a before photo 
with a bit of music probably and then we'll end the video I think. Um, just on this, so on this carcass, you may have seen, if you watch the AccuRide Rudder video, you may have seen me making this in the workshop. We made it out of 18mm birch plywood, very rigid and strong. And we made the top, rather than being a full top, we made it as stretchers, so a front and back strip, so that we could get up in the gap to the, the rear of the unit, because structurally I wanted to be sure that I had I'd wedged the unit in at the back here, up against that bulkhead, so that the weight of these, when they're pulled out, the weight of them, which is pulling down, would be resisted, <clears throat> so that unit couldn't possibly tip. And we put as many screws and packers and fixings in as we could, so that this is now very solid. And something else we had to work around from a design point of view was this, this window sill. So it just shows you how you have to be very careful considering everything and making sure that it's actually going to run and fit. And then with it being an ancient barn that's been converted some years ago, you've got issues of squareness. So we, we went for uh, fitting this panel flush in line with this face, but that meant that this face was not, not in line, but there's not, not much we could do about that. Um, but then all the, the furniture itself was sort of straight and square to itself and fitted just right. Um, more CT1 gap filling up here, which again has gone very well. So I'm confident that will be, that will be stuck and it won't crack. I do always find these, these angle scribes quite tricky, but uh, I'm fairly pleased with them on this one. Oh, and I think finally these these are I think the last of the latest batch of shaker doors that were made on CNC so these are some of the ones that featured on my my three-part video series about experimenting with getting doors made by CNC so these as I as I've shown in that video had had some problems which we had to iron out um, including the fit of the panel but as you can see we we have successfully ironed that out and they look very tidy well, as ever, thank you for watching. I will finish with a little montage of photos. Uh, any questions, do ask, and I'll see you next time.